Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning, Crossroads Church. My name is Marcus, the lead pastor here at Crossroads. We are in a series entitled The Gift Within, and this is the last um, talk in that series. If you have your notes, it should be in there. If not, just take some real notes because I'm going to press through some of these things here this morning. Now, the Holy Spirit uh, is a gift that was given to us by our Heavenly Father. Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said, I'm about to leave. And the disciples were tripping out a little bit. They were a little bit nervous. How are we going to continue to do life? He says, don't worry about that. I've got that covered. Uh, It is to your advantage that I go away. My father's going to send us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so they embraced the gift of the Holy Spirit after uh, he was resurrected 50 days later on the day of Pentecost. And then the Holy Spirit also has different attributes, different various giftings, various ways that he, he functions in the life of the believer. If you're born again Christian, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Scripture says he lives within us. He's, he's, he's with us always, but he's, he'll, he'll live inside of us. And so there, the, the greatest question that individuals have is this, how do I know that the Holy Spirit's leading me? Anybody ever ask that question? How do I know it's not pizza or spaghetti or what my, you know, somebody said or whatever? How do I know? I, I need to know. I need to hear the voice of God. I need to hear how he leads me. And so this morning, that's what I want to do. I want to look at that attribute. Because there's certain things that the Holy Spirit does. He always points you to the Father. He always reveals to us the Son. He makes Jesus alive and real to us. But one of the greatest things that he does is he helps us and he leads us and he guides us. So we don't have to be frustrated here on this earth and just trying to figure things out. And here's the beautiful thing. God wants to lead you. You shouldn't have to be scared. You shouldn't have to wonder. You shouldn't have to be frustrated. He desires to lead you. Just like Jesus led the disciples, the scripture says that the same uh, type of an individual, the same person was going to be upon us or within us, and that's the Holy Spirit. Just like he led the disciples, the Holy Spirit will lead us. And so my question is this, is there a framework? I've been walking with Jesus for a long time, since I was 19, and I'm 50-something, whatever that is. I got my birthday coming here. I'm probably 56, I think. And um, so, so the question is, is there a path, is there a framework that the Holy Spirit leads us into as he's guiding us, as he's uh, helping us navigate through the circumstances, the tribulations, the stuff that we face in life? Because how many guys know that um, you all have to make decisions, and decisions you make, make you. We don't have to be troubled. We can actually be led by God's Spirit into some of the big decisions that we have to make on this earth. So is there a path? Is there a, a, a marker? Is there something, a framework that he leads us to? Yes, there is. There's two of them. Write these down real quick, so in case I don't have enough time. The Holy Spirit will always lead you into freedom. Whenever he's speaking to you, you wonder whether or not, is that him or is that not him? He always leads you into a place of freedom, and he always leads you into a place of peace. There's other things, but those two things right there are, have been dominant in my life. He always leads me into a place of freedom. Should we buy that car? Well, $700 a month payment, that ain't freedom to me. No. Should I marry her? No, I already have a wife. <laughs> Oops, forgot about that. I told Natalie, I was like, babe, if you leave me, that's okay. I'm going to follow you. <laughs> Go with someone else. I'll be right there. I'll be outside. He always leads you into a place of freedom. He always leads you into a place of peace. So let's, took it, let's look at that real quick. Is that okay? Um, remember... In the Old Testament, the children of Israel, they were in bondage. They were in slavery, 400-something years. God came and delivered them out, and the Scripture says that he led them into a place of freedom, into the promised land. It says, by day and by night, fire and a cloud by day, fire by night. Why? Because God desires to lead his children. 
You're not exempt from that. He desires to lead you. It'd be awesome. If, it'd be so easy. It's like, oh, there's a cloud. Let's go this way. It doesn't lead me to Blue Bonnet or Chevrolet. It'd be awesome, right? But the, the point is that he always wants to lead us, and it always he led them out into a place of freedom. My first experience in walking with Jesus, three days after I gave my life to Christ, I heard the Holy Spirit say in my, in my living room, and Natty thought I was crazy, and I thought I was crazy, but I heard him say, I want you to go to Faith's Way, which is a little bookstore that was here back, way back then. I want to show you a book I want you to read, and I want to show you a man I want you to meet. And I told Natalie that. He goes, what, what are you talking about? I was like, I have no idea. But that thought, I'm not thinking those thoughts. So it must be the Lord. Let's go see. And, um, come, uh, you know, without saying a whole bunch of stuff, basically I walked into that store. There was a book that not necessarily popped out of the shelf, but I knew this was the book I was supposed to read. It was a little book that's by Brother Hagen. I didn't know who he was. A man by the name of Kenneth e. Hagen, who later I, found, I wound up going to their Bible school in, in Oklahoma. But that book was entitled, I Went to Hell. Scared the hell out of me. I got delivered immediately on Saturday. And a couple of days later, I was in that bookstore reading this book. I didn't know what happened to me. All I knew is that the change that I needed had to come from this book. So I began to search for the scriptures, search for the scriptures. Come to find out God's plan for my life. But it was through that book, at the very end of that book, that there was a Lord's Prayer there. And I gave my life to Christ from that book. Place of Freedom. The other thing was, he says, I'm going to show you a man I want you to meet. All of a sudden, this man walks in, and I heard on a vo- voice on the inside saying, that's him. Well, I don't know who this man is. He's a little Spanish man, a little old truck driver named Joe Montoya. Joe Montoya walks in, and he's like making a beeline towards me. Like, I don't know. Brother, how are you doing? I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Come to find out, he was a godly Christian man, and uh, he was a truck driver, loved the Lord. He was just a great evangelist. And I became his friend. He became a mentor or coach to me. Joe took me into his office downtown. Actually, if you guys ever remember, for those of you who've been here in Seguin a long time ago, they used to have a Christian helping center. And Joe used to, he ran that. Joe sat me down and he goes, I want to meet you. I'm going to bring a couple of my friends over. And I want, you to, I want you to get on a hot seat. There was a little hot seat like this. It was a big old tall six foot something. Uh, Anglo albino, literally, he was an albino Pentecostal albino, weird looking. <laughs> Little Joe was short, kind of big and stocky, Catholic, and then an older 70, 80 year old man, Catholic from the St. James. Joe was from Guadalupe, our lady of Guadalupe. This man was from St. James. This other guy was a Pentecostal. They sat down, laid hands on me. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God, I didn't know it was that, but I know now the Spirit of God came upon me, and I was filled with God's Spirit. All I could do for the next four or several hours is just say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I walked downtown just saying, praise the Lord. Marcus, how are you doing? Praise the Lord. That's all I could say. Freedom. I was filled with the Spirit. I was born again, and I was filled with the Spirit. He led me to that place, and the result was freedom in my life. Does that make sense? Second Corinthians, the third chapter says, now... The Lord is what? His spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's what the scripture says. Galatians 5, it says, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. The reason he set you free is so that you can walk in a place of freedom. That's why he says, stand firm then and don't let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. He doesn't want you in a place of slavery. He doesn't want you in a place where you're burdened down. He says, come unto me, I'll give you rest. There's another passage in Galatians, the fifth chapter. Now, watch this in verse 16. He says, um, in the other translation, it says, walk in the spirit, do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I love the way the Passion Translation says it. It says it this way. As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. In other words, when the Holy Spirit comes Inside of you, one of the things that he immediately begins to do, he begins to separate on the inside. That is from your flesh. That is from my, from my spirit, my, my father. You have the voice of the flesh. You have the voice of the devil. You have the voice of culture. You have the voice of God. And the voice of God will always lead you. The voice of the spirit will always lead you to a place of freedom. He says, 
For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self-life from dominating you. You got born again, all of a sudden you're like, I I don't want to do that anymore. My flesh wants to, I don't want to, I shouldn't. So there's a tangle, there's a mess going on. Well, one will lead you into slavery, into bondage. The other one will lead you into freedom. Who do you yield yourself to? It says, but when you are brought into the full freedom of the spirit of grace, you will no longer be living under the domination of the law, but you'll be soaring above it. God's spirit is called another helper, one just like Jesus. When you take a look at the life of Jesus, Jesus, whenever he saw people that were in bondage, the end result of meeting with them would be freedom. He ministers to a leper, the leper is free. He ministered to the sick people, they became healed. He ministered to those that were lost, they became found. Does that make sense? He ministered to the Pharisees, the religious people, get, guess what? They didn't get free. They got furious. They got angry. They were bucking against the Spirit of God. And we can too. He's not going to force us into anything. But he always wants to lead us and guide us into a place of freedom. So my question is this, thinking about your marriage, thinking about your relationships that you have, Are those things leading you into a place of freedom or you feel in oppression or into slavery? No condemnation, okay? So if you're frustrated with where you're at in your relationships, God wants to free you from that place and into a place of strength and freedom and grace. A lot of times what happens, we're just selfish people. We don't want to give in. That's my remote control. Or whatever that is. I want to go out with my friends. You can't control me, woman. Your thought life. That's what you're facing, huh? Your thought life. Is your thought life, when you're by yourself, you know, your life will flow in, in, in where your most pre- predominant thought flows. Your, your life will flow in the direction of your most predominant thought. If lust is the most predominant thought, you're going to walk into that, into those places. You might not even walk there physically, but you'll, you'll walk here. And so in your thought life, is your thought life leading you into a place of freedom or into a place of bondage? If you're led by God's spirit, it leads you to a place of freedom. No condemnation, but liberty and freedom. You get to laugh, you get to enjoy, you get to embrace, you get to love unconditionally. I'm not saying that you won't ever make mistakes or anything, but the most dominant part of your life will have a sense of freedom. Does that make sense? The second thing is the Holy Spirit leads you into a place of peace. He'll always guide you. The path that he takes you eventually will lead you into a place of peace. Psalms 23 is my favorite psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down where? Green pastures. But he leads me beside still you ever been beside still waters? The word that comes to me is peace. It's just the peace about it. Peace doesn't mean to be in a place where there's no noise or no trouble or no hard work. It means that you can be right in the middle of all those things, but yet on the inside, you have a calmness in your heart. You can't be led by your feelings. Your feelings is the voice of the flesh. Your, your reasoning will get in the way. That's the voice of your soul or your mind. But your conscience, if your mind is being renewed by the word of God, that's the voice of your spirit. He leads from the inside out. Have you ever been in an argument? Have you ever gone to a basketball game with your kids or whatever, or a baseball game, and uh, the umpire made a bad call, or you thought he made a bad call, and you began to argue with an umpire? <laughs> Anybody ever get kicked out of the game because of that? My wife almost has a few times. Seriously. It's like, babe, you're a Christian. Stop. (laughs) That word in Colossians, the third chapter, it says, let the peace of God rule. Say rule. Rule. That's not it. Colossians 3.15. It says, let the peace of God rule your heart. That word rule means to be an umpire. 
Let the peace of God be the empire in your heart. Another translation says, let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11. I want you to watch this. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11. You can put that up there with me. I'd appreciate it. 1 Corinthians 2. For what man knows, listen to this. What man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? It says, who knows more about you than you do? You know what's going on inside. You, first of all, let me just say, you're a spirit. You have a body. You have a soul. When God breathed into Adam the breath of life, he became a living soul. Mind, intellect, emotions. He's spirit. He has a soul. He lives in this body. Okay? That's why we have the hope that we have when people pass, they just translate from death to life. But he says, what man knows the, the spirit of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except who? The spirit of God. He's the only one that really knows who God the Father is. Now, he goes on to say, you and I have no excuse. We have received not the spirit of the world, but we have the spirit who is from God on the inside of us. If the spirit of God is the one who knows the Father more than anyone... Guess what the Spirit of God's function and role is on the inside? He reveals the Father to us. More than that, he says that so that we could know the things that have been freely given to us by God himself. That is absolutely beautiful. Philippians, the fourth chapter, is another, another passage. Philippians, the fourth chapter, it says, Be anxious for nothing. How many guys know people that are worry warts? I mean, you're just... You cut yourself, next thing you know, you got cancer or whatever. It just goes on and our mind has a lot of ways to play games, right? Your husband doesn't come home on time. I wonder who he's seeing. <laughs> My wife, Natty, and I are laughing right now because she goes, who, who served you Big Red? This is three or four days ago. Who served you Big Red? I was like, man, I haven't even drank a Big Red in so long. She had a dream that some gal was serving me Big Red. <laughs> And I was doing something with this lady. What was funny is this morning I woke up and I grabbed some tacos for all these guys. And without even thinking, I grabbed a big red. <laughs> and she came into my office and she looked at me. She goes, who gave you that big red? <laughs> I was cracking up. I don't even know why I'm talking about that for. So he said, uh, don't be anxious about anything. In everything... By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. He goes, in other words, quit freaking out about all this stuff, that, all this pressure that's going on. First thing you do, you, you, you pray and you give it to the Lord. And what does he do? He's going he's to do something. He's gonna, he, this is how he leads. He says, and the peace of God that passes all your understanding will guard your hearts and your mind through Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? So, you have big decisions to make. Some of you guys need to be moving to another city. When Natalie and I first moved, we were living in Seguin. Our biggest move was to move from here to New Braunfels. <clears throat> that was a huge move because we never went anywhere. When you were in Seguin, you just stayed here. That's it. I told mom, she goes, oh, no, mijo. It's so far. It's like, mom, it's seven minutes away. <laughs> then I moved to New Broken Arrow, Oklahoma to go to Bible school. But we never made those moves. And it didn't seem in the natural that we should be moving over there. I have three daughters. I had an old pickup. Part of it was a 70-something. The other part was another 70-something. I used to turn it on with a, with a push button. I used to cut it off with a light switch. But somebody gave it to me. I just knew that I knew I had a piece about going to Bible school. And I left. I had a dog that was a prostitute dog. They had, had like six puppies with me. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. But I had a peace. And we never, we have never made a move. We have never done big decisions in our walk, in, in our marriage, unless we have peace, unless there's peace inside of us. If, it, if there's not a unity there, we just, we just said, we're just going to wait. We're just going to put it on the shelf. Just wait until there's peace. It doesn't matter if it takes a year, three months, whatever. It doesn't matter. When you don't have peace, you don't have peace. Just don't move. Just wait. There's a timing to everything. 
And if you don't have peace, if you, you know when they're not, you don't have peace. It feels like if you're taking a shower with your socks on. It's just wrong. <laughs> Proverbs, the 20th chapter, it says, The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. He's searching. God wants to guide you, not by your head. I met a man in New York. He says, don't be led by the head, Fred. You'll soon be dead. He says, learn to, learn to be led by your inward man, by the spirit of man. Because when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, he comes inside of your spirit. And the way he communicates, he bears witness. He bears witness that, yeah, you're the son of God. Yeah, you're an overcomer. Yeah, you can triumph in Christ. And so you just wait. You just pause. So you always think about those two things right there. There's a whole lot to talk about. I just don't have time. So he always leads you. The path that he leads you, the Holy Spirit, whenever you hear his voice, you might not understand it in that moment, but just, just say yes. You'll wind up into a place of freedom or into a place of peace and rest. And you'll be so glad. You'll call me one day and say, Pastor Marcus, thank you so much. Now, real quick, Pastor Jeremiah, I asked him last night, I said, hey, I really sense that. At the end of the service, I don't need you to close with a song. He goes, but don't pick a song out until you hear the message. The Holy Spirit, let him speak to you, and you close with whatever song's on your heart because it's going to lead us to a place of freedom. It's going to lead us to a place of rest. So that's how we're going to close this service. But before we do, I've got to just share. I know that I have to share this with you guys. Here's what's been stirring up in my heart here lately is um, two things. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Think of a child. You know that babies have to hear their parents repeat sounds thousands of times before they're able to enunciate those same sounds. It takes them between 9 and 12 months to voice the first intelligible word. On average, babies, by the time they're one years old, they only have, they have like five words in their vocabulary. That's it. Mom, dad, poo-poo, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but when that, when that child gets to the age of six, all of a sudden, the average child has accumulated over 14,000 words. So you go from five to 14 in just a few short amount of time. Here's my point. It takes time to recognize and understand the voice of the Holy Spirit. So you got to stay in the word of God. You got to press in. You got to say yes to the promptings and the leadings of the spirit of God. Just keep saying yes. And you'll soon, all of a sudden you'll recognize like, oh, that's the Lord. And he'll never, he'll never contradict his word. You'll always stay in alignment with his word. The second thing I really have to share with you is this, is that, um, you know, those, the, the ladies that give their, their um, that help a mom who's pregnant have birth, they're called midwives, right? They're professionals. Well, I've been thinking about this idea how the Holy Spirit is like our midwife. You see, the father, every single one of us at some time or another, we're pursuing God. It says if we delight ourselves to the Lord, he, he makes a deposit in our hearts. He, he plants a seed in our hearts. It's a dream. It's a vision. It's a goal. It's something that's huge. It's something that's in the future, but it begins with God the Father. And every time a seed is planted, it, it has to incubate. It has to marinate for a while. Just like the child, it takes nine months. Then all of a sudden, there's the right timing, and it gives birth. Well, the Holy Spirit knows exact, the exact timing of how long it needs to be marinated, of how long it needs to stay in the womb. And he knows exactly when the timing is so it needs to give birth. And so what he'll do is he'll just wait and press upon you. Now it's time. And you know how the midwives do? They just push, push, push. Shut up, push. For some of us here, some of you guys think it's time. And I'm here to tell you that I think he's telling you, let it simmer for a little bit. You'll know exactly when it's time. He's not hiding stuff from you. He's not obscure. You'll know when it is. 
And there are others of you that it's time. It's been time. We need to deliver that baby and go. You need to make that move. You need to start that business. You need to open up that ministry. You need to make that phone call. Whatever that is, you know what that is. And then the last thing is this. Um, always think of the Holy Spirit being for you. He's never against you. He's always for you. One of the, one of the words means that he's your defense attorney. What does a defense attorney do? He defends you. He's for you. He's trying to help you into a place of freedom. But many of us look at the Spirit of God or God the Father as a prosecuting attorney. Pointing the finger, I'm going to put you in jail. I'm going to scold you. I'm going to do this. Big difference. A defense attorney is on your side. A prosecuting attorney wants you to go to jail and to a place of slavery. So many of us are walking in a spirit of condemnation and, and ugliness, and we just feel with shame and guilt always. That's not the spirit of God. That's not peace. That's not freedom. It's slavery. It's bondage. Let him speak. Let him minister to you so that you can just let him be your defense attorney. Hey, I'm with you. I'm for you. Be patient. You'll make it. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand real quick. <clears throat> That's all I have. Pastor Jeremiah is going to close in a service. Whatever he shares, let's sing with him and then we'll be dismissed. Is that okay? You guys have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend and may God's blessing just be upon you all weekend. Spirit lead me where my trust is without border. When you walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. The Spirit lead me where my trust is without border. When you walk upon the waters wherever you Call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of the Spirit. in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. 
or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.